All right, welcome to my video about how to create a, a drawing that looks like it's a 3D object, but it's the 3D representation of an object on a flat surface. And so if I look at this in 3D view here in AutoCAD, you'll see that this thing is just flat. So it's just a representation, no different than if I were just to draw this on a piece of paper. And so I'm going to show you how to create uh, this object as you see here. Uh, this is the object that I'm working off of, so you can refer to it as you're drawing your object. So we're going to start with drawing setup, and then once we've got our drawing setup, we're going to draw this front face, and I'm going to walk you through how to do this. So the first thing is just go to AutoCAD, open up a new template, and you can start from any template you want. And then we just need to set our drawing aids. So the first one is grid, that's up to you whether or not you want your grid on. Then the second icon here is snap mode. So I'm going to click on that little arrow, go right to my snap settings, and I'm going to change this to be an isometric snap. And then if you look at this, each one of these little grid squares is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and set my snap spacing to be 0.25 and turn my snap on. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then I've got dynamic input turned on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on. I'm going to turn ortho on and then just make sure everything else is turned off. I shouldn't need anything else right now. So now I'm ready to start drawing. So I'll click online, come here. I'll snap to a point to start from. And then this first line is going to be two and three quarter inches long. So I'll just move to the left. And with ortho on, it's only going to allow me to draw along these axes whenever I need to switch to draw on a different plane. I just hit F5 on my keyboard and you'll see how your cursor changes and hit F5 again. So you just toggle through your different ISO planes that you want to draw on. So I'm going to come on over here two and three quarter inches. I'll click there. I'll come up two inches. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in, kind of pan around a little bit. And now come back to the right three quarters of an inch down a half an inch, back over to the right a half of an inch, and then back down another half of an inch, and then an inch and a half, which will take me to the end, and then I can come down that final inch to just finish that off. And now if I'm ready to start drawing the front piece of this, so this little front square, I need to switch to a different isoplane. So again, I'll just hit F5, and now I'll switch to an isoplane. I can draw one inch to the right, hit F5 again, so I can draw up an inch. And then I can go ahead and come on back to where I started. And now I can go ahead and finish drawing the rest of this. So I'll go ahead and pull this up so you can take a look at the grids, go ahead and finish drawing this with everything except the circle, and I'll show you how to draw the circle next. Okay, so this is what you should have so far. So then the next thing is drawing this little circle down the corner. So for that, I'm actually gonna use the elliptical arc command. So I'll go ahead and click on elliptical arc. And then I come down here to my options, and I'm gonna draw an iso circle. So I'll go ahead and click on iso circle. It asks for the center point of the ISO circle, so I'm just going to put it at the lower left hand corner and then I'll move it where I need it to go. So I'll click there as far as the radius of my ISO circle. Take a look back here, it looks like my radius is a quarter of an inch. Um, but before I draw it, I need to hit F5 so I draw it in the correct plane so it appears as if it's on this uh, front face. So I'll do that. I've got my radius set to a quarter of an inch, so I'll go ahead and click there. Then ask for a start angle. And so again, this was a arc, so I need to specify a 360 degree arc. So I'll just come straight to the right. I'll click a point there and then work all my way around and then click again so I have a complete circle. And now I can just use my move commands. So I'll just type in M for move, select my ISO circle come off over here in space and then just move it to the right. It looks like a quarter of an inch to the right and then three quarters of an inch up. So I'll go ahead and do that. And 
now I've got my ISO circle in there. So then the last thing is just to add in the center lines for that, and then I'm ready to dimension this. So go ahead and draw that in, and then I'll show you how to dimension it. Okay, so this is what your drawing should look like right now. So then the last thing we have to do is add these dimensions. Uh, nothing really new about adding these dimensions. We're just going to use aligned dimensions. The only thing that's new is when we create the dimension, we need to use the oblique command to set our extension lines to be parallel to the object that we're dimensioning. Okay, so this is what that looks like. Just come on back over to my drawing. I'm just going to use the aligned dimension tool. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my object snaps for this because I just want to snap to those two endpoints. Pull this dimension out and I'm just going to click a place to, to place it anywhere. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you that oblique tool. So it's under annotate. I'm going to click on dimensions to expand it out. Click on oblique and it asks me to select the objects. So I'm going to select this dimension and just hit enter to say I'm done selecting dimensions. It says enter my obliquing angle. And so this is the angle that you want these extension lines to form with the with where zero is set in AutoCAD. And so for this particular one, it's going to be 90 degrees. And the reason for that is because zero in AutoCAD is perfectly horizontal so that's the angle that I'm going to enter for that particular dimension and then your other dimensions so I've got a one inch dimension right here so to create it I'm gonna come on back up here click on oblique select that dimension hit enter and my obliquing angle is going to be 30 degrees because that's the angle formed with the horizontal. So 30 degrees for that one. And then the last one is this two inch dimension here on the back side. So I'm gonna create my oblique angle for it. Go ahead and select it, hit enter to say I'm done selecting dimensions to apply this oblique angle to. And then this oblique angle is gonna be 150 degrees. So I'll just type in 150. And that's the angle formed from the horizontal. So that should be everything that you need to know to be able to finish this up. As far as this diameter dimension here, I just use the leader command and I tend to use the uh, LE leader. So I just type in LE and it's a quick leader. I click a point on the circle, click another point off in space, hit enter twice, and then type in my text. hit enter twice and that's how I tend to create those leaders is just using that quick leader command and so that should be it to be able to finish this up so go ahead and finish this up and I look forward to seeing what you guys create so thanks for listening